接下来我们精彩继续，有请主题演讲《潜入梦境》，and next we will move on to the presentation Dive into Dream， and we'd like to invite Head of Production at Dreamscape Jennifer Cook to give us a speech as welcome。Thank you so much for inviting me to speak here. This is a big honor. It's one of my favorite festivals. I am Jenny Cook from Dreamscape Immersive. We are a location-based VR company based out of LA. Um, I'm going to tell you a lot about Dreamscape, the content we make, and our vision and our business plan. But I think, since it's very unique and different from what a lot of people know as VR, I thought I'd start out with a little video that gives you a bit of insight into not only our content, but what our actual first flagship location looks like. So let's see if I can... Steven Spielberg running Amblin Entertainment. 
Walter is a director. He is an executive producer of blockbuster hits such as The Minority Report, Men in Black, and he's a writer. His first piece he wrote was War Games. Bruce is a CEO of our company. Bruce came from Walt Disney Imagineering, which is the division of Disney that opens and runs parks. So Bruce knows more than anybody intimately how to create a guest journey at a premium level experience for multiple people within a park. Running next to them is Kevin Wall. Kevin Wall is another co-founder. Kevin is um, one of the most intelligent people I know on identifying technology as it's born and recognizing the success rate of it. He also ran companies called Control Room. Control Room was a company that was deploying major productions. They put on huge concerts such as Live Aid, Live Aid. So he came with an experience of not only being able to see the potential of technology at its birth, but also to be able to deploy major productions. Working with him was Aaron Gresky. Aaron worked at Control Room the same way, and he's our COO, again, with that efficient manner of deploying major productions. They met with our Geneva team, which I talked about who created the Bespoke SDK, our technology platform that we utilize. So the quick talk about our technology platform and what makes it unique compared to some of the other stuff that's out there, it is full body tracking. We put markers on your feet, your hands, you wear a backpack and an HFD, and you go in with six players in a 15 by 15 meter, untethered, able to walk around with a zero latency. Our unique IK tracking system is something that makes you have no motion sickness and lets you fully embody the story that we're putting you in. We want you to forget that you're using technology. We do not highlight that. As you saw in our pictures of the store, technology should be seamless, but it should be somewhat of the hidden beast that you want it to be. So after we came up with the vision, and we found the technology, and we set the goals in front of us, we have to start talking about what content are we going to make. What are the stories we want to tell? And it's a challenge. I'm going to go through that a little bit about the challenge of telling these because you are, you and the other five guests are the main players of the story. We don't want passive storytelling or passive story watching. We want you to be part of it. So we dove in and created our first unique IP. We, want, we went into it thinking we wanted to work with licensed IP, but we really found that we wanted to brand ourselves as content creators and not just exhibitors. So we created our first three pieces. Um, Curse of the Lost Pearl is a experience where you go into a 1930s movie theater and you are called to action as the adventure into an Indiana Jones-like experience. You walk through the movie screen, you and the other guests, and you instantly are set on an adventure of finding the Lost Pearl. You go through catacombs and mazes, you end up in a giant temple, and I won't tell you what happens because I want you all to come see it, but you have to get out alive, basically. The Blue, some of you might recognize this a bit. We co-produced this with Weaver. Weaver had the Blue out on Steam for years. It was absolutely beautiful. We loved the visual fidelity of it. So what we wanted to do was turn it into a story. So we were inspired by the look of the Blue. But we needed something for you as the guests to be within there as opposed to just passively watching the underwater creatures. We have turned you into expert divers and you are called to go down, dive down below, Find out what's happening to these blue whales, where they're migrating, and as you down there, you find out a baby whale is trapped in line, fishing lines, and you need to save it together. Alien Zoo. That was our original piece. That's something that Walter came from. He came with when he and Steven Spielberg ran Amblin Entertainment. They actually had this script and wanted to make it a live action film. Luckily for us, they did because we were able to turn it into something we put out. In Aliens, you, you are shot up to a floating station in the sky that has endangered species of aliens that have been saved. You're going to go on a Jurassic Park-like tour of the zoo. Believe it or not, something goes terribly wrong, and you and you, the rest of you guys must save us. What's unique about these are, the way I tell it, it sounds almost a little passive, but the first thing we need to do is make sure you get involved in each one of them. So I'm going to go into that a little bit, but you definitely aren't just going along for a tour. You are making things happen along the way. To give you a little vision to our Dreamscape, again, we branded Dreamscape very much in not highlighting the technology of VR. We want to say Dreamscape takes you on adventures. So if you get the look and feel of an old train station, that's what we wanted. We actually put a real clock in there, which is shocking to many kids these days <laughs> to read it, but we have a departure, we have a departure lounge, we buy your tickets when you check in. 
and you can see all the times you buy tickets to. Then you move into your departure lounge. And we want you to sit and have a social space. We want you to be calm and relaxed, ready for your adventure. And then we get you called to the now boarding. Our operators bring you back and you go on your experience. If you see our gear up state, our gear up image up there, the idea of that again is not to be intimidating to people who are not tech savvy. We're looking for a crowd from 8 to 80. So if we want the older crowd, we want to not make them intimidated that they're going to go into some kind of gaming event. We want them to feel comfortable. So we see you. We have operators who teach you how to put on your foot track or your hand track or your backpack. And then they bring you in. We also do something when you get brought in. We have stage lighting, somewhat similar to that, that blinds you on purpose. We really don't want to show the guts of our theater. We want you to forget about it so we get your headset on as fast as possible to so blind you from that. So right now we have our flagship location opened up, but this is our plans, our media plans. We have plans to go global, and we are definitely going to go global. The first one that's opened, opened in gosh, December of 2017, so we've been open for about seven plus months. We're going to open up North Park, Dallas next this summer. We're opening up New Jersey, Ohio, and then we're going to go into the Middle East with Dubai. That's not our only plans, which is the ones we have announced. We definitely are in talks across Canada, Asia, and the rest of America to move out there. So real quick, touching on how we identify our stories. When we're looking at what content we want to make, you know, we've really hard on ourselves, and we go through a lot of content that we look at and think it's going to be great, and we decide we're not doing it. We want to know a couple of key questions before we even develop it. Are we the stars of this experience? You cannot be passive, you have to be the star of it. Can this only be done in VR? If it's a great story, but it doesn't mandate being told in VR, we should tell it in whatever medium it should be told in. Would I like to do X in VR? Would I like to be an adventurer in VR? Would I like to go see alien animals in VR? We have to ask that question every time, because if it's not something that gets you emotionally excited to do, you probably shouldn't be telling the story. Do we give you something to do and not just see? Again, that speaks to the actor. When you first go up in Alien Zoo, one of the first things we do is have you reach out to an alien animal and pet it. And the most guests don't realize this, but there's an actual alien there. And they all reach out and then they take a step back and it's actually there and you're petting this animal that's on the edge of trackers and an actuator, so it's moving with you. That lets you open up your brain and say, this is not a story I'm used to seeing. Cold through. It has to be a multi-player experience, it has to involve six guests at all time, and it has to be a bonding experience. And then it has to be mind-blowing, or why bother telling it? Alright, let's make this story. Define your world rules. I come from 20 plus years of making animated films, and that's one of the key elements you have to do when you start telling the story. Build your world, define your rules, and don't break them. Everybody's smart enough to notice when you break your own world rules. Have that wow moment. I just told you about the truck horse moment. Start everything that lets your guests go. This is something different. I can explore. I can get out of my shell. Do that up front. Don't say that to the younger. They're going to wish they knew that before they even started. We do that with haptics. We are a full haptics included with our storytelling. We include butt kickers, which take the floor and the rails, smell, which is incredibly powerful tool to use wind, mist, and then we use props. Alright. The thing that I think people forget to do when you want a bonded experience is focus on the empathy. Your guests have to feel empathy. Empathy is the key to telling an incredible story. It's not just having sympathy for the characters that are seeing. They're involved in it. Empathy is an intrinsic understanding of what you're going through together and what your characters are going through. If you can create that, your guests will walk away with a memory of something they did and not saw, which is very critical to how we're creating our stories. All right. So how do you create empathy? A lot of it starts with the fact that you're putting six of you in an experience they've never been through before. Immediately, they have a unique experience together that only those six people have done together. So that right there puts you in a common experience. Create emotional moments, joy, tension. Danger is a great one. Everybody, if they get through something scary together, suddenly have a bonded moment to it. 
and then leave them on an emotional high. People are coming to be entertained. So we have gotten through a couple versions of our stories where we've been telling it and we get a little bit too heavy, a little dark at the end, and we think, uh oh, we, these people came here and wanted something fun to leave with. Let's let them go out on an incredible end experience. Uh, many of you know VR is a really difficult thing to talk to people about. People are challenged. I think the person who has the hardest job in my company is our marketing, our head of marketing. He has the challenge of going out and saying, this is this incredible experience that you haven't experienced anywhere else. It's different than the VR that you don't even understand, but trust me, it's good. And how do you do that? I mean, how do you show something? We all know in, in game capture of VR, it doesn't look that great and compared to when you're actually in it. We also know most people don't understand it. And so we utilize the socials as much as possible. I think people are more inclined to believe something when they hear it from friends, peers, or people that they trust as opposed to being marketed at. You want to draw them in, you want to get them excited about it. So we utilize a lot of social. One of the other metrics I can talk about is West Hill is a mall, our, our investor in Dreamscape, with the strategic goal of getting more foot traffic in the malls. We know that malls aren't getting as much traffic, people are online shopping, so they're looking to bring in businesses that are experiential. Over 90% of our guests are telling us they came to the mall just to do Dreamscape. The mall loves that. That means we are not consuming their foot traffic, we're creating foot traffic for them. Our other investor, AMC, or who we're going to open up in Dallas, they're the same way. People aren't going to the movies, they're streaming, they're doing all different forms of entertainment. So they want to bring good traffic into their theater. So they're giving a space within the theater, and you have an external, internal entrance, and that'll bring foot traffic to them. So that this is how we're partnering with businesses out there to find ways to get our premium content out in a way that services us and them. So I believe, that's the end of my presentation. Thanks, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your excellent speech.